Boris Johnson is the most venal, the biggest liar, the most amoral, and the most incompetent Prime Minister in all British history. There is, however, going to be a battle fought over Johnson's posthumous reputation. We're already seeing a vigorous attempt to create the myth of the lost leader, this magnificent, lonely, courageous politician who led Britain out of the European Union, and this is a man who was brought down, to quote the Daily Mail, by pygmies. Johnson was deliberately constructing his final act. He wanted to go out in drama, and he succeeded. He's a rule breaker. He wants to reinvent reality, and that's quite deliberate. It's the theater, the way he goes. It will take a lot of people in. There are gonna be a lot of Boris Johnson loyalists, just as there are Trump loyalists. He will want to shape the Conservative Party even while out of office, and I predict that he will be quite successful in this. There's been a claim that ministers such as Sajid Javed, Rishi Sunak and co were acting honourably. That claim is unsustainable. It is actually the opposite of the truth. They didn't mind when Johnson seems to have lied to the Queen. They didn't mind about the completely mendacious and fabricated 2019 general election manifesto. They all sat in the House of Commons listening to Boris Johnson lie week after week from the dispatch box. It didn't seem to bother them in the least. All guidance was followed uh, completely. The guidelines were followed at all times. I can tell you once again that I certainly broke no rules. In fact, they would go out afterwards into television studios and defend the Prime Minister and repeat his lies. Do you believe the Prime Minister? Of, of course I do. The Prime Minister you set out the truth. Of course I do. The Prime Minister set out his understanding of this matter. This applies to Sunak, it applies to Javed, all of the main contributors to the coming leadership contest are part of complicit in the moral squalor of the Johnson period in office. The Tory party no longer exists as it used to do until quite recent times as a sort of manifestation of much wider civil society. It is now owned by oligarchs and by a handful of non-DOM press barons who successfully mobilised international capital in order to run the publicity machine which took Johnson into power. What we're going to see now that Johnson has gone it is the newspapers and the donors looking for somebody else who will serve their ends. They will seek to choose the next leader of the Conservative Party just as they chose Johnson almost exactly three years ago. It's too early to say who that person will be because they've got to show that they have the policies which will please the billionaires. Whoever wins will come in on tax cuts. They will continue the policy of confrontation with the European Union. They will continue the war against human rights. They will continue the weaponization of asylum seekers. And they will continue the general attack on the rights and freedoms of the British people, particularly in the workplace. Those policies will be fitted for three categories of people. The right-wing press, the big billionaires, and that tiny Tory membership. It's a minute constituency and not in any way representative of the rest of the country. But these people have the privilege of choosing the next Conservative leader and therefore the person who can be Prime Minister for the next two and a half years. And one key figure here, very unknown to the public, but enormously important to today's Conservative Party, somebody called Ben Elliott, remember that name. He is the money man inside the Conservative Party. The umbilical cord which links Conservative Party donors to the Conservative Party machine. He's the founder of a company called Quintessentially. It's a kind of concierge service for the super rich. And so if you're an oligarch or billionaire and you land in London and you want to go to the best parties or go and have dinner with the royal family or meet politicians on special terms, you go and knock on Mr. Elliot's door 
that is what the Tory party has now become, a vehicle for very, very rich people. To have such a figure as chairman of the Conservative Party tells you everything you want to know about how Boris Johnson has governed Britain for the last three years. I'll tell you an example of how the media really was determined not to upset Johnson and his associates. Two months into the Johnson premiership, I noticed the fact that he was lying all the time. And this was new. It may have not been like that. Cameron had not been like that. Gordon Brown had not been like that. So I went to Channel 4 and I said, let's make a dispatches documentary documenting Johnson's lies. They showed some interest and then it was stopped. I said to the production company, what about the BBC? He said, no, 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 they won't be interested. I went to the Spectator magazine. I was told that they were too close to Downing Street. I then went to the Daily Mail, for which I had a column. And I did write a piece, but that was killed. It was impossible at that time, in the run-up to the 2019 general election, to say through vast tracts of the British media that Johnson lied. Whereas you could say anything you liked about Jeremy Corbyn. You could really make any stuff you liked up about Jeremy Corbyn, and nobody was going to worry about it or complain. I finally wrote a piece for Open Democracy. I showed how political journalists were being used by the Johnson political machine to smear their opponents. They themselves were part of the machinery of deception. That is what happened in the run up to 2019. Although Johnson was a very distinctive figure, he did, at the height of his powers, have an amazing, almost mesmeric effect on quite a large number of people. Ultimately, he was the manifestation of a broken system, or a corrupted system is a better phrase, whereby the super-rich governed British public life. He was able to rise because of powerful anti-democratic forces. First of all, the manipulation of the mainstream media, its failure to do its job. And secondly, the power of billionaires. Something went hideously wrong to enable somebody we can now see to be a venal cheat and liar to occupy the most important position in British public life. The collapse of the Johnson government is taking place at a terrible moment in British social and economic life. We are probably entering a period of economic fragmentation on a scale that's not seen maybe since the 1970s, possibly not since the 1930s. People can't afford to live. There will be plenty of people trying to step into the breach and provide excuses for economic failure and pointing their fingers at vulnerable people. That is the way you move towards a right-wing populism and veering even towards, at a certain stage, fascism. Boris Johnson has resigned and a lot of people are really pleased about that, and so they should be. Mr Johnson has resigned in shame and disgrace. He has done immense damage to this country. But I would warn people, don't be too optimistic. I don't think things get any better from here, they may get worse. Whoever becomes the next Prime Minister, it'll be very important to hold them to account. If the record of the mainstream media with Mr Johnson has anything to go by, it won't be the mainstream papers. That's why it's important to support Double Down News. I strongly advise you to join Double Down News on Patreon.